Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hello, beloved church family. Wednesday evening worship service. Oh, praise God. I'm so excited. Rejoice. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm so, so thankful. Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah. That God has saved us for all of eternity. God is on our side and he loves us. Amen. He's head over heels in love with us. Praise God. And I am so thankful. I am so thankful that, have you imagined this, beloved church family, that God loves us all because Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. All because of what Lord Jesus Christ did. Let's, let's just meditate. Let's rest on that. Amen. That is not a matter of what you're doing, I'm doing, right? All the things we struggle with and what's going on. No. God is for us and just rebuke all that. Amen. Healing and breakthrough and restoration. Hallelujah. His glory is just going to keep on manifesting in the overflow in your life and my life. All we got to do is just keep pleading the blood of Lord Jesus Christ, staying focused, hallelujah, staying focused, and allowing our Father to bless us with his Holy Spirit presence, his light shining through us, amen? And I love this life-changing revelation that God is for you, loves you, not sees one bad thing towards you, all because, say his name, Lord Jesus Christ, amen? Let's open up in prayer, praise God. Heavenly Father, in the name above every name, your perfect sacrifice, Lord Jesus Christ. I am so thankful, Lord Jesus Christ, that this world cannot define me or, or put anything on me, that there's no devil nor demon that can come against me. There is no authority or power that can come against me because, Father, we are covered by your blood. That, Lord Jesus Christ, we belong to you for all of eternity. That, Lord Jesus Christ, it's all because of you. Everything is all for your glory, Father God. We want none of it. It has to do all about you, Lord Jesus Christ. And, Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for that moment in eternity that you left heaven to come here, that moment in eternity that you died for all of us. You died for this entire world to save every soul, Father. And I pray in our obedience, Father God, that your light shines like never before. We thank you so much, Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, we worship you, Lord, and I just thank you. And Holy Spirit, we ask you right now for your presence, anointing, overflowing. You are the only teacher. That, Father God, we thank you that you would use us as a mouthpiece. But, Father God, we don't go through anybody. We rebuke that. We don't go through anybody. We only go through our Lord and Savior, Lord Jesus Christ. So, Father, we just thank you for this glorious Wednesday evening worship service. And, Father, in every worship service, whether it's Pastor John or myself, we are one in you, Lord Jesus Christ. Along with all the elders and deacons, we are one, Father. And, Father, we just bless your holy presence, giving thanks unto Lord Jesus Christ, staying grounded, Father God, faithfully in fellowship in your Holy Spirit, blessing your peace. So, Father God, we just thank you right now for all of eternity that you love us. Speak to us, Father God. Speak to us. Speak to us through your word, through Christ, and speak to us through your spirit and your power and anointing within. And it's in Jesus Christ's holy and precious name we pray. And all God's beloved said, amen. Hallelujah. God bless you guys. Praise God. Give your loved ones a high five. Amen. Oh, please do. Hallelujah. It's all for our God. Amen. I know it's goofy, but I love it. Praise God. We can't give each other high fives on Sunday mornings, but I love it that we're all waving to each other. I love it when Pastor Tisha is just waving somebody, say hi. And uh, praise God, if, if you're in your car or, you know, you're just with Holy Spirit, just give Holy Spirit a high five. Amen. And don't forget his angels that are ministering to us. I am so thankful in the name of Lord Jesus Christ that Holy Spirit's light attracts all of heaven around us. Amen. I'm a firm believer with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength. That if we could see in the spiritual realm, we would act completely different. Amen? That we would speak completely different. Why? Because, you know, God knows that we're human. Amen? But the glory of God is, is that we are His. Hallelujah. Say with me, I am His. Amen? And as His beloved child, as His property, amen, all of heaven now is within. Praise God. I'll never forget for all of eternity how Pastor John ministers to me all the time, pastors me. And he tells me, you know, I just love just walking with my Father God. I just put him in my arms, though. 
And the glory of God is that's, that's how open arms community church come. That's how the name come through Holy Spirit. And when you open your arms and you just see the cross. Amen. God is good. All the time. Hallelujah. Just keeps getting gooder and gooder in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. So we're going to be in a, hallelujah. We're going to be in the book of Philippians chapter 4 verse 19. We're going to open with that. And then we're going to be in Ephesians 4. And we're going to be in a few verses starting at verse uh, 25. So we're going to be in all, in all that and praise God. And we'll put the scriptures up on the screen. Glory to God. Holy Spirit said uh, earlier this week, he said that we're going to have our worship service in the prayer room for, I, and, I, and I believe it's for this week. I'm asking Holy Spirit, but I know, I, I know who I'm worshiping with. We're one body in Lord Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter. We just want to bless God and wear what he wants. Amen. So I'm just excited. Praise God. And, and glory to God. How beautiful is that? Amen. I just want to say thank you once again for your heart of worship and just being a blessing. Amen. And just, and just allowing Holy Spirit to flow through your life through his church, amen? Say with me, Holy Spirit's church, amen? And that we we just wanna lift up the name of Lord Jesus Christ, praise God, and just love on one another. Hallelujah, just love on one another, amen? Let's open up Philippians 4, 19, and my God, say with me, my God will meet all your need according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. I know we discussed this maybe a month ago, However, what we have to make sure that we, uh, we uncover this quickly is in King James Version, it's need, just one need, right? And then, of course, in other translations, they added an S because, of course, I understand, you know, God is God Almighty and hallelujah, everything, amen, everything, hallelujah, our Father God will do in Jesus' name, amen, lines up according to his word in faith and relationship. Holy Spirit will manifest his promise in your life and in my life. Praise God. And I believe that in Jesus' name, whether it's for bones to grow back, amen, cartilage to be restored, hallelujah, for bad cells to be cursed by the blood of Lord Jesus Christ. We rebuke those cells, amen. If there is any cells that's not life producing, that does not line up to the word of God, to God Almighty being sent from heaven, from the creator of everything good and perfect, we curse those things in Jesus' name, and those things have to be casted to the pit of hell. Amen? Any addiction, any disease, you hear what I'm saying? Any grumbling, complaining, any demonic, foul thing in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Say it with me. It is cursed by the blood of Lord Jesus Christ, meaning that any foul thing from Satan, from this world, is rebuked in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let's just give God praise. Amen? Because I believe firmly, listen, I've already heard through very, oh my goodness, through many, many, I can't even say the words correctly, through many, many testimonies that on our online worship, we live in a different world now. All of us want to physically be in the building together in fellowship. We all want that. And God sees our heart and glory to God, it will happen soon. But I'm getting a lot of testimonies saying, God healed me. God healed my, my back that was struggling for all these years. God touched my back in Jesus' name. I, I used to not be able to do this. Now I can do it. I, I, I'm having testimony after testimony because Lord Jesus is coming back soon. And it's all of Lord Jesus Christ and Holy Spirit's anointing through you and me. He is going before us. All God is asking from us, beloved church family, is speak the need. Amen? Speak it. Now notice I said need. No, there's no S at the end of it because in my relationship with God Almighty, there was only one need that, that, that has ever existed in my life. In my life. Now family, once again, I'm just speaking for me, nobody else. There's only one need for all of my life and that need was God save me. God saved me, and his name is Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? And when, when God provides this need in your life, and you are content with just that, is Jesus enough? Amen? Is Lord Jesus Christ enough? 
And God knows when you are sincere and true that this is it because Holy, Holy Spirit fills you. He's the confirmation. Holy Spirit fills you in the overflow, being born again and his presence. Say with me, Holy Spirit's presence fulfills every need in Jesus' name. Amen. So let's repeat that. My God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. To our God, verse 20, to our God and Father, be glory forever and ever. Amen. To our God, ah, hallelujah, our Father, for the glory to be his forever and ever. Amen. So we understand that the glory, the magnitude of God's glory, when you, when you make that transition from the Old Covenant to the Old Testament into the New Testament, and then the New Testament, New Covenant, right? This word glory, the, the manifestation of God's glory becomes something from the old, remember, Old Testament, Old Covenant. It was one of those glory moments that look at God's glory, right? Look at the mountain that is, that is, it looks like it's on far, right? On far. <laughs> look at the thunder, right? You see the glory, you know, right? You see the glory of God's presence over Moses' face, right? And then he would put that veil, right? You see the glory, right? You see the glory. And then when you make the transition into the New Testament, hallelujah, glory revealed, glory manifested. See, glory of what God has spoken, the Old Covenant, Old Testament, in what he spoke, glory manifested in the New Testament is the word, what he spoke, became flesh. Hallelujah. Glory is Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Say his name, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's give God praise. Hallelujah. And when we transition now from the glory of Lord Jesus Christ on that glorious day that he took, right, he took sin to the pit of hell, all past, present, and future, he took it to the pit of hell and he was glorified. Hallelujah. Resurrected. Amen. And remember what he said, don't touch me for I have not yet been glorified, right? And now in the new covenant, this word glory, this word glory is no longer a matter of, oh, look at that. It's now in you and in me. And it's for intimacy with God Almighty that as Abba, as Father God, as Abba, Abba could look upon you and say, look at my glory, amen? Look at my glory. And I pray in Jesus' name that we all have this heart that we just want to bless God because he provided that need through Christ. Amen? And now, now, as his glory is revealed and manifested within us, now we show that. We show that. We show that unto God in a relationship, being obedient, listening to Holy Spirit, if you are married, amen, immediately, if you are married, praise God, immediately, the presence of Holy Spirit, his fruit will show, will be evident, amen, will be evident in the way you love and honor your spouse, amen. This is why God made marriage between men and women, right? Men and women, man and woman, right? A husband and wife. Why? Because his glory is revealed in a relationship that he has ordained. Amen? Hallelujah. Say it with me. I am, I am God's glory because Jesus Christ is my Lord and Holy Spirit's glory lives in me. Amen? Hallelujah. Let's give God praise. Woo! Hallelujah. Rejoice. Amen? Rejoice. You have the light of God in you. It can never be stolen. It can never be darkened unless you allow it. And that's what we're going to get into. Praise God. Holy Spirit has been teaching us. Amen. It feels like now for the past few, I don't know, the, the days are all bleeding together, so I don't know. But we're going to be now in Ephesians 4. Amen. Ephesians 4, verses 25 through 29. Amen. Praise God. Therefore... <laughs> Therefore, reason, amen, each of you must put off, put off, say with me, put off, 
falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbor. For we are all members of one body. Whose body are we? Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Many of you beat me to it. In your anger, do not sin. Amen. Let's pause right there. In your anger, do not sin. Immediate right now, Holy Spirit is identifying within us that when anger comes on us, it is like what I like to call a curb feeler. When I say curb feeler, I know I'm giving away my age. It don't matter. Praise God. We're eternal. Hallelujah. But curb feeler was back in the day in, in, in junior high and high school. There, it's these metal things that came out so that your rims wouldn't, wouldn't scratch the curb. Right? So you would know that if you're getting too close to the curb because you would hear that metal go, right? It would, and you could actually hear it throughout the whole car because it's, it's shaking you know, the body and everything. So it was a way to say, be careful, right? Because if you keep going down that, right? If you keep going down, you're going to mess up your rims. You don't want to mess up your rims, right? And so this, in the same way, Holy Spirit is teaching us right now that when you're angry, God give us emotion so that in the emotion, we could take what has happened, right? This is a split second now. We can take what has happened and immediately offer it to Lord Jesus Christ. Rather than taking what has happened and in pride, dwelling on it, right? In pride, just, hmm, right? Rebuke that, amen? Rebuke that. And so here God is saying, in your anger, do not sin. Because see, what God is identifying quickly is that when the enemy puts out a distraction and the enemy will use those that are closest to you, family, right? Friends, co-workers, right? The enemy will do whatever. He lies, steals, cheats, kills. He does whatever he can to create division, chaos. That's all the devil is, chaos. God's a God of order, right? And the devil is chaos. The devil wants to pull on your emotional strings so that when you get to the point where you want nothing to do with laying it down at the feet of Lord Jesus Christ and denying yourself, right? Just denying yourself. If you want to hold on to that, God is saying right now, you will sin. You will sin if you allow these emotions, if you allow these thoughts, if you allow these things that are happening around you be a part of you. If you allow it, if you, if you hold on to that, then the enemy is going to deceive you so that you will sin. And God is saying right now, in your anger, do not sin. And listen to what he says when we continue on verse 26. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. God is begging us not to let that thing meditate in your thoughts so that it can manifest into malice, right? Into bitterness, into rage, right? Into unforgiveness. Because listen to how Holy Spirit has been teaching us, right? If you have unforgiveness or if you have that pride and you don't want to crucify it, God says, you put this on yourself. I have nothing to do with that. And why would we want that, especially when we say, Jesus Christ, you are my Lord and my Savior. Oh, but this, I'm going to be like this. But, but this, yeah, you're, you're my Lord. But this, I don't, it don't work like that. Amen? Amen? It's all or nothing. Hallelujah. All or nothing. Can you say that with me? All or nothing. Amen? And the glory of God is through every worship. We all worship differently. Amen? But it's in that personal relationship with God Almighty when we say, Father, I would rather be sorry about everything. May I confess to you, I'm, I'm in this point, in this season in my life, and I am just so thankful that Holy Spirit seals us, protects us, that Father God gives us through Lord Jesus Christ and only through Lord Jesus Christ, his presence. And God asked me, God said, would you, would you want to be right? Would you want to be right? And when the trumpet sounds, just go ahead and stay on this, on this world and be right all you want. Because it's all about you. And I said, I rebuke that. And God says, then you be sorry about everything. 
you show this world by your fruit, and that's Holy Spirit in me, that I'm sorry, I, all I care about is worshiping Lord Jesus Christ. It's all about Lord Jesus Christ, and I will fight for Holy Spirit peace, and I will do whatever it takes, amen, in Jesus' name, to protect Holy Spirit peace so that on that glorious day when that trumpet sounds, amen, hallelujah, that, that, that we, all of us, amen, all of us, hallelujah, in the name of Lord Jesus Christ, in the twinkling of an eye, is out of here in Jesus' name, amen. Do you receive that? Let's just give God praise, amen. So I would rather be sorry, bottom line, be sorry. Say that with me, be sorry. I am, I am. With all my heart, I am. Have, have no grudge, no bad feelings toward anybody. You know why? Because of what Holy Spirit is teaching us. His presence within us. How he's speaking to us to let things go. That we have no right. We call on Lord Jesus. You have no right to hold on to unforgiveness no more. Well, brother, you just don't know. No. No, rebuke that. I don't need to hear your reason or excuse. You called on Lord Jesus Christ. He owns everything. Everything. And I choose to have everything covered by the blood of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. So here God is saying, if you, if you rest your head on your pillow and you have this in your heart and all you're doing is just meditating on it, meditating on it, God is saying that you've actually allowed, you've actually allowed for that thing to creep into the Holy of Holies. In pride, you've actually allowed. Here it is, the written word of God, right? Amen, Ephesians 4, verse 26. Read it for yourself, this, it'll come up on your screen, praise God for his wisdom and technology. In your anger, do not sin. And here God is going to explain it some more and say, do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. Why? Because as you rest, and the rest should always be in the Lord Jesus Christ, so that the Holy Spirit can bless you and anoint you. Amen? From the top of your head to the soles of your feet, so that he can flow through the temple and rebuke any sin, any garbage to, to cleanse the temple. Don't you love that illustration that God give us right now as we worship? how Lord Jesus Christ went into the temple. And as he went into the temple, he saw how they made a mockery, how they insulted, how they spit in God's face, in, 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 the, in, in everything that they set up, all these tables and, and all these things that they were selling and everything. Take these things, hence. Jesus Christ went through and he, he turned over, right? He turned over all of them. And right now, that's what Holy Spirit is saying to us, that don't let this come into our heart, that rebuke that. Be, get right. Amen. Get right. Beloved church family, get right with God. There's some of you right now that's saying, well, that, that loved one has done, passed on. And, and I pray that that, that loved one is, is with our Lord Jesus Christ in all of eternity. I ask you right now that God has brought that person, not, listen, if there's no condemnation, what God is asking of you is bring it to my altar, amen? Bring it right there to the feet of your bed in your living room. Father, I forgive this person. I forgive my dad. I forgive my dad for doing the things that he did because the, the, the devil deceived him. The devil did it to me. The devil deceived my dad and, and Father, th those demons tried and I thank you that your blood Lord Jesus Christ wash me clean as white as snow and that Holy Spirit this is your life now and I'm just so thankful Father God for your forgiveness that I hold nothing against anybody my family my cousins right whoever it is beloved church family as I mentioned earlier because Holy Spirit said I want to heal my church I want to I want my virtue to, to release and be flowing from heaven through all my beloved children so that virtue 
will, will, the glory of God will touch souls that need healing, breakthrough, restoration. And the glory of God is that as this virtue is released from heaven, just like how virtue was released through Lord Jesus Christ when the, when the daughter with the issue of blood, right, for 12 years touched him. See, right now, God has given us that anointing. It's all Lord Jesus Christ that, that, that any soul that is struggling just by looking at you because of Lord Jesus Christ, the light of Holy Spirit shining, shining in and through us, that agape will get a hold of them and bless their lives forever. Amen. Do you receive that? Hallelujah. I receive that in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's continue on. And do not give, hear me now, and do not give the devil a foothold. Woo! Hallelujah. I am so thankful when Holy Spirit teaches us like this and his anointing is just overflowing within us. When God says, do not give, that means that you and I have the authority only through Lord Jesus Christ to not give the devil anything. Amen. Now notice, Lord Jesus Christ taught, John, right, 10.10. 10. The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, right? And here now, hallelujah, here now, Holy Spirit is teaching the church of Ephesus, do not give the devil a foothold. This is the power, the resurrection power that we have as beloved children of God to walk out our faith, our identity in Christ through the way that we worship God Almighty and how we speak and what we allow to come into the Holy of Holies. And God is saying, do not give the devil a foothold, meaning that when the emotions are struck, we have the anointing through Christ to be able to immediately crucify our flesh and go to the Lord and say, Father, you knew this was going to take place. But above all, Father, as I crucify this thought, as I crucify this emotion, as I crucify this anxiety, as I crucify this worry, as I crucify this betrayal, Father, you promise, because I am in Lord Jesus Christ, that you will resurrect me in the newness of life, amen? You will resurrect me with a fresh anointing because Father, I will not allow the sun to go down, amen? I will not allow the sun to go down in this anger. I will not sin. I will not meditate on it. I refuse in Jesus' name, amen? Say that with me. I refuse, I rebuke the enemy in Jesus' name, amen? Verse 28, anyone who has been stealing must steal no longer. Hear me now. If we're stealing worship from God because we are consumed with thoughts of, of worry, of anxiety, if we put stuff above God, right? If we put idols above God, yes, it can be material things. Yes, it can be your own children. Yes, it could be your own wife, your own husband. Yes, it could be the house payment. It could be all this. Listen, God is saying right now, don't steal from me any longer. Put it in order, amen? How do we put this in order, Father? I give it to you. I, Father, I never meant to hurt you because guess what, beloved church family? Don't you agree? And I know many of you beat me already. No, not even knowing what I'm gonna say, it's all Holy Spirit. He's our teacher. Don't you agree that God loves your children more than you can possibly love them? Hallelujah. Don't you know that God loves your wife? That's his daughter more than you can love? Women, don't you know God loves his sons? Your husband, because... That's, it's all his. And all God is saying, don't put my blessing above me. God is saying, put my blessing where they belong, at the feet of Lord Jesus Christ, an offering. Hallelujah. This is why God blesses us so that we can bless him with the offering, amen? Bless him with his, amen? Say it with me, bless him, hallelujah. Say it with me, bless him, hallelujah, bless him. Anyone who has been stealing must steal no longer, but must work. Amen, must work, do something useful with their own hands that they may have something to share with those in need. And right away, God is backing up what he says as far as putting everything in order, 
Don't steal worship. Don't steal glory. Don't touch it. Amen. It's not about me, me, me. Has, I rebuke that. I rebuke Joey. It has nothing to do about Joey or John. Yes, we're pastors of God's Holy Spirit Church. Amen. Agape. But it's all for the glory of Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. You hear us say it all the time. We have no idea what we're doing. We just worship Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God for elders, for deacons. Amen. Praise God for a family. We are all one body in Lord Jesus Christ. And when it's all about Lord Jesus Christ and his spirit is running everything, hallelujah, there's complete peace in Jesus' name. Amen. And not only the peace in God's building, Open Arms Community Church and his church body, but there's peace in your family in your children, in your grandchildren. Blessings upon blessings. Why? It's his light. Hallelujah. It's God's presence. Amen. Let's just give God praise. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. God is so good. Amen. So he says, he says that don't steal. Don't steal any longer. And then I love it because he says, you must work. Don't be idle. Amen. Don't, there's a direct correlation with being idle, bored, lazy, you know, just stagnant, right? Just, there's a, there's a direct correlation with being idle, idleness, and then now worshiping idols. Can you hear an amen? Idol, idleness, now worshiping idols. And God is saying, do something. Because when you get into that mindset, there's inner war taking place. If you're a child of God, you have Jesus Christ as Lord. Holy Spirit is, is in you for all of eternity. Holy Spirit right there. God is continuously speaking, encouraging you, blessing you, right? Just cheering you on. Hallelujah. Cheering you on. Hallelujah. Ready, okay. Ready, okay. You've got this. You've got this. Ready, okay. Right? I mean, <laughs> thank you, Lord. And God is continuing. But when this is idle, what happens is the devil starts putting gods, lowercase g, demonic things, and it's all pride. And then when it manifests, it becomes I. And now what you want is trying to go over what Holy Spirit wants. And this is why God is saying, anyone who has been stealing must not steal any longer. Don't steal. But must work, do something useful. Do something useful with their own hands that they may have something to share with those in need. We just covered Philippians 4.19, amen. There's one need, his name is Lord Jesus Christ. And isn't it beautiful how this written word comes alive in Ephesians 4 when we talk about how having this intimacy with God and putting our lives in order and allowing his presence to flow through our lives and allowing God to... Love our wives, love our husbands, love our children, right? Love our church, allowing God's presence to do all this. And here God is saying, but don't be lazy, right? Don't be idle, right? You can always, you can always be a blessing unto Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, you can always be a blessing. You can always do what God has called you to do. Because see, this whole world is searching for Lord Jesus Christ. And once you find Lord Jesus Christ, God promises, I now live in you through my Holy Spirit. And this is what God is saying, that when you adjust, make these adjustments in your worship life, and you're just thankful for Lord Jesus Christ, amen, you're blessing his holy presence, and you're allowing him to flow through your life, amen. You're keeping busy. What is this busy? It's not busyness of this world. It's busy going, oh, here you go, Father. Oh, I got hurt right here. Here you go, Lord Jesus Christ. I thank you. I thank you, Father, that you've been here. Oh, I saw something I wasn't supposed to see. Father, I choose to see you on that cross. And Lord Jesus Christ, I thank you that as that thought tr tried to creep in, you rebuked it right now, Father. Oh, Father God, I thank you right now that, that you died for all my sins. But Father, I'm still sorry. I'm still sorry, Father God, because I know that I'm forgiven. I know that I'm forgiven. But Father God, I choose right now to listen, to hear your voice. In this relationship with God, God says, now you're being busy. Now you're doing something with your own hands lifted high. You know why? Jesus Christ is Lord, amen? With hands lifted high, here's your hands, Father God. I am your hand, I am your feet. I am your temple, use me, O Lord. 
Amen. And so when you're busy with the Lord and you're doing work for the Lord, just being a blessing unto God first, his anointing goes before you. And now anyone who has a need, he will meet through you. Can you hear an amen? You see, this goes beyond, it goes beyond that. See, this ain't nothing. Can you hear an amen? It's nothing. Yes, we live in this world and we, it's one of our needs, right? But we only have that one need in Christ. And it's when we worship God this way and allow his presence to flow, God promises that as you go, I, I will meet the need of any soul that you come in contact with because you're in complete worship unto me. Hallelujah. And I pray in Jesus' name that Holy Spirit's blessing you with life-changing revelation in Jesus' name. Amen. Ephesians 4, we're going to close with this in verse 29. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. Amen. And the beauty is, do that with me when I say listen. Praise God. I pray in Jesus' name that we all have ears to hear and that God right now is the only one. He's our only teacher, the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Flowing through the temple of God, renewing our minds. Amen. Renewing our minds of God's glory that is manifested in all of us as his beloved children. When God says do not let, that means you have authority. You have power. And here God is saying, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth. We live in a different day and age now where it's not only talking, right? You can write a letter, you can text, you can email, right? You can put on social media. I guess that's the same thing. You could do a video like what we're doing now, right? It's this type of communication where God is saying, don't let anything unwholesome come out. And there's magnitude as far as what God is teaching right now, because for one, he says, do not let, which God is saying, you have Lord Jesus Christ, you have the power. You have the power not to act like the world acts. You have the power not to speak like this world speaks. You have the power, right? Hallelujah. Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ is Lord. We have the power. His name is Holy Spirit, resurrection power in us to not be a part of darkness, amen, because we are children of light, hallelujah. And it's in this glory, it's in this manifestation of God's presence that as we know that we don't let any unwholesome garbage talk come out of our mouths, we don't attack nobody or anything else, God then backs it up and says, only, only do whatever's helpful for building others up for building others up, right? For encouraging, for blessing, amen? Amen, for bringing people together, amen? For only do that. And I love it because God says, he will lay out their needs before you. And in this practice and how you worship God Almighty, hallelujah, being mindful that Lord Jesus Christ lives on the inside. The Holy Spirit is living this life, this vapor of a life in you and in me. That he is our owner, our God, our Father, Abba, amen? That God in every situation and circumstance that he leads and guides you to, he will meet all the needs because of your faithfulness in allowing his goodness to overflow through you, amen? And as you meet those needs, it will benefit anyone who has ears to listen. Now we close on this final thought because Holy Spirit said so. In the beginning of time, who hovered and who was listening for Lord Jesus Christ? Many of you beat me to it, Holy Spirit. Amen. If you don't believe me, go back to Genesis 1. Praise God. Holy Spirit hovered and he was waiting for Lord Jesus Christ to be spoken. And remember, that's the Old Covenant, Old Testament, right? Before anything, we now are covered by the blood of God, purchased through his perfect sacrifice through Christ our Lord, sealed for eternity with his Holy Spirit. And glory to God, God is saying that as you worship Lord Jesus Christ, 
having a relationship with Father God through His Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit goes before you orchestrating your steps because you walk by faith, not by sight. And as you worship God Almighty in allowing His goodness to flow through you because we don't harbor any darkness, we rebuke that in Jesus' name, that as His light shines through you, who is agape? Father, Son, Holy Spirit. That we close in Ephesians 4.29 saying that it may benefit those who listen. And the glory of God is, Holy Spirit has gone before us. He's in your tomorrow. Amen. He's in our next week. He's in our next year. Amen. He's in eternity. Hallelujah. That when we speak life, that Holy Spirit is already moving on all these souls, hovering over every situation. And all we do as children of God, as beloved children of God, because Jesus Christ, our precious Lord Jesus Christ, He give us this anointing, this power through His Holy Spirit to not judge one another, not grumble, complain, right? Don't allow darkness to come in. It's not about us. It's all about Lord Jesus Christ. That when you speak encouragement, you speak life, you speak blessings, hallelujah, you speak breakthrough, you speak healing, you speak beauty, amen? You speak, hallelujah, agape. Holy Spirit says, so shall it be in Jesus' name, amen? You receive that today, hallelujah, Let's just give God praise, amen? So thankful for you, praise God. We pray for y'all every day, hallelujah. God is good all the time. It just keeps getting gooder and gooder, hallelujah, in Jesus' name. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much. For Lord Jesus Christ, for all of eternity, Lord Jesus, hallelujah, we know that you're here. We know that you're coming for us soon. We know, Lord Jesus Christ, you are perfect and you are the only one worthy. And Lord Jesus Christ, thank you for blessing us, for giving us your name, for giving us you. Father God, for all of eternity, we worship you. We thank you for Lord Jesus Christ. And Holy Spirit, we know that as we lift up the name of our Lord and Savior, Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, you're in complete control of this temple. Thank you, Father God, for forgiving us through your holy and precious blood. Father God, we only want to bless you. Open Arms Community Church, Father God, we want to bless you with overflowing joy, with all of your fruits, Father God, your agape, your love overflowing, with your peace, Father God, with your order. Father God, we just thank you so much. And we give you all the glory, all the honor, all the praise. And it's in Jesus Christ's holy and precious name we pray. And all God's beloved said, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you guys. Oh, love you so, so, so much. Amen. Rejoice. Hallelujah. God is on your side. Amen. We just want to say thank you so much once again for your heart of worship, for blessing God first and being a blessing to everybody else. Amen. Love you. Love you. Love you guys so, so much. Remember, I'm Tuesday evenings. Is I am recovered. Hallelujah. I am recovered. Dot online. We have our Wednesday evening worship service. Praise God. And Saturday evening we have the table. Welcome to the table. Amen. And um, just please keep that all lifted up. Praise God. And um, I pray that I see you Sunday morning. Hallelujah. I'm already so so excited. Praise God. And um, if if we don't, I'll see you in the next half an hour. Amen. Love you, beloved church family. Jesus Christ is Lord. God is on your side. Amen. Holy Spirit, light shines through you. In Jesus' name. Mwah!